GoldenEye is such a nostalgic game for me, so I've decided to create a stained glass piece as a tribute to all the after school hours of joy this game gave me. If you're unfamiliar, this game is based on the 1997 James Bond film starring I don't know, this guy and also Sean Bond, Sheen Bean looking just as handsome as ever. Alright, you've got me. The graphics are pretty bad. Back in the day, I remember them blowing my mind. But it definitely does not hold up to today's standards. However, the graphics were not what gave this game its magic for me. It was the bonding experience that my dad and I shared. That's right, we bonded over being Bond. You see, before GoldenEye came out, I was used to playing colorful video games with cute little characters and dreamlike fantasy worlds. Then Goldeneye just throws me into enemy territory where all these gruff looking men are trying to murder me. It was scary. So I called my dad in to help. We used to play Super C for the NES together and we had gotten so good at that game that we even played it without the Game Genie cheats. I know, I know. We were pros. And that's how I knew when Goldeneye got too intense for me that my dad was the perfect person to help me out. Not only did he beat the single player campaign for me, but he went on to beat it in all of the hardest settings. You first start out as an agent, which is the easiest mode. And then you had to replay all the levels as a secret agent, which was a little bit harder. And then the hardest mode was double O agent. And even though you're replaying the same levels each time, they didn't just increase the difficulty of the enemies, but also gave you additional objectives that you had to complete. It definitely kept it from being boring. Even as I'm replaying this game today, just to get some footage for this video, I had forgotten how hard some of the objectives were. The very first level of the game has you install a, a covert modem. And I'm thinking, oh, that's super easy. Let's just throw it a, oh, here and what? Okay, fine. I guess it needs to be on a computer. This ought to do it. What? Wait. Lord have mercy. You telling me I missed a computer somewhere? <laughs> okay, well, let's just quickly replay everything yet again. Oh, it's here. It's beside this building. Just let me, uh, uh stupid, stupid boxes. Let me in. Oh, okay. Here I am and get the modem. Yes. Haha, <laughs> installed. Now let's just casually stroll back to that other room. Where was that again? I... Ah, here we go. And then we do this and... What? It... Is that a timer for a bomb? They wouldn't... They wouldn't blow me up, would they? Oh, no, no. <laughs> We're good. Success. <laughs> I didn't doubt for a second. Now we can finally bungee off the dam. I remember loving this cutscene. And look here, Whee! here we go. Uh, I don't see the bungee jump cord, do you? The worst objectives were when you had to protect Natalia. On the archives level, you just had to escape with her, but too much shooting and ooh, she gets scared and run away. And even when she did follow you, yeah, I get it. Escape through the windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm, come on, come on, what, what why in the, why won't you just go? Oh, my bad. You want to use this other window? Okay, here, here you go. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Great. The objectives really did make you feel more like a secret agent, though. You got to intimidate nerds to do your bidding, even on a mainframe that you accidentally blew up just a just a little bit. <laughs> but it's okay. You still got it. And you take pictures in secret bases, you steal their golden eye key, replicate it, and then just yeet the original back. Yeah, you know, they'll, they'll never know I was here. I'll be honest, I don't remember the golden eye movie that well, but I have heard that the game was an accurate adaptation of the film and was praised for being one of the best movie to game translations. But what I do remember is that tragically, you have to kill Sean Bond in the end. Sheen Bean, it pains me to do this, but 
I have to. Oh no, not your pretty face. No. The main reason we kept going back to this game wasn't for the plot, however. No, 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 no. It was for the multiplayer mode. Every time I end up reminiscing with someone about old N64 games and GoldenEye is mentioned, the first response is always something along the lines of, Oh man, I used to love playing that game with my friends. Multiplayer mode is just what stands out in most people's minds when they so fondly remember this game. There were 11 different maps and multiple different weapon sets. So many weapons to choose from, including slappers only. That's right. No actual weapons needed here, just a judo chop to your heart's content. There were five different modes to play in, and if that didn't make multiplayer spicy enough for you, they also threw in some cheat modes like the DK cheat, so you could play looking like this. Why? Well, well why not? You can also use DK mode on the regular gameplay, but it, it was a bit creepy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Multiplayer mode also gives each person awards at the end of each game, which I always thought was so fun. Was I proud of getting most dishonorable? Very! Quit turning your back on me to run away, you cowards! My dad and I's favorite way to play was in the caves map with the rocket launchers. There was one area of the map that gave you access to both body armor and rockets, so once you controlled that area, it was just all up to the other player to outwit you until they could take it over. And remember, this game was split screen, so you always knew where the other person was. Now, I don't think this was cheating. It was just a part of the game. Come on. I absolutely loved the game being split screen. And not just so you could spy on your enemy's location, <laughs> but it also meant that the person you were playing with was right there on the couch with you, right beside you. It was an experience you were sharing together as you blew each other up. Nothing brings you closer than a shootout in some underground caves. Am I right? If you haven't noticed from clips earlier in this video, the stained glass piece I'm making is based on the watch in the game. James Bond looks at it when you pause the game. So it's kind of like your safe zone. You just feel calm and comfortable when looking at it. The watch also has other handy uses, like detonating remote mines. And in that one train level, there's an escape hatch, but oh good golly, these metal rectangle things are bolted to it. Whatever will we do? Mm, good thing my watch has lasers. That's right, laser watch coming at you. The watch is the one constant in the game. It's there in every level you play. It is your loyal companion. And when I was thinking of a design to create as a tribute to one of my all time favorite games ever, it was the first and only choice for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. And without further ado, I present to you the finished GoldenEye Clock. <laughs>